Hi everyone and welcome back to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is episode six of Rooftop TV. Now, for our first story, we recently heard about how a London food charity has teamed up with the Savoy Hotel and is providing hundreds of meals each week for the capital's most vulnerable communities, including homeless people who are facing food poverty in the pandemic. Here with the story, I'm pleased to welcome Sarah Colombini, who is one of our writers here at The Rooftop. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Tom. Since lockdown began, a food charity have delivered one million meals to vulnerable people in London. City Harvest London um, is a charity that collects nutritious supplies from all over the food industry and they redistribute the food to 300 organisations that feed London's most vulnerable people, including homeless shelters, soup kitchens, and refugees for women and also the elderly. This week, the City Harvest have announced a collaboration with the Savoy Hotel. On the 23rd of March, the Savoy temporarily closed its doors as a result of COVID-19. However, a small group of chefs will now be producing 400 meals a week to City Harvest to support London's most vulnerable communities during this difficult time. The Soup Kitchen London is one of these charities that relies on them, and they've described the deliveries as the highlight of their week. They say that people are more desperate than ever for support, with young and old new faces attending on a regular basis. Wow. Well, that must be making a huge difference to those people's lives right now. Thanks, Sarah. Now, for our next story, many of us are familiar with the big issue, which is the weekly magazine that is sold on the streets across the UK by homeless or vulnerably housed people. But the current public health crisis has meant that the magazine's 1,500 sellers have been taken off the streets, effectively putting them out of business for the foreseeable future. But resilient as ever, the Big Issue team have taken drastic action to try and turn things around. Now, I'm really pleased to welcome to the show today, Paul McNamee, who is UK editor uh, of The Big Issue. Um, And Paul is here to tell us a little bit more about what they're doing. Hi, Paul. Hi, Tom, how are you doing? I'm very good, thank you for joining us. Um, So, uh, very tough times for you at the moment. I'm I'm sorry to hear it. Well, yes, and if I could just take a couple of steps back to the the period right at the end of March when this all kicked off, because like everybody else, we were we were um, staring down the barrel. We on on a particular Friday, we made the decision to pull um, the print run or to pull the majority of it, which is something I'd never done before. We knew that the government was starting to move rough sleepers into um, into accommodation, into hotels and hostels, which is a great thing, and, and we, we applaud them for it. And we also knew that lockdown was coming because we'd, we'd been told that. So we, we decided before even lockdown happened that for the health of our vendors and for the safety of our vendors, because so many have underlying health problems, we would remove them from the streets. And in that moment, in that scary moment where you go from potentially selling 70 to 80,000 magazines a week to zero. You think this is this is it, you know, you, 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 you stall or you fly and we flew and we immediately started making changes. So we, we went from a non-subscription model, the big issue has always been sold on the streets, um, to a subscription model. We started building our subspace. We went from just, there may have been a couple of dozen, but not in any significant numbers initially hundreds and then thousands and, and we're, we're still climbing a lot of that was due to support from from great people some um, celebrity support from the likes of Chris Packham and Luella Benjamin and Armando Iannucci and a whole host of other people and um, and obviously from the general public buying the subscription taking these initial three month subscriptions and at the same time we thought right we we need to look to retail and a number of retailers started working with the Sainsbury's first and Co-op, McCall's, now Morrison's, uh, Asda and Waitrose also. Uh, And we know how tricky it is for people when they go into shops because they might not be focused on buying magazines. They might be thinking, I've got to go in, run the gauntlet, get my groceries and get out. But we do want to make sure that uh, the big issue is is on their list. uh, It's it's buying essential items, isn't it? So... It is an essential item, Tom. 
make sure that the, the Britain knows that. And then we also we, we built a, a new digital app. You could previously buy the magazine digitally, but it was a page turner essentially. So we built a, a whole new app, um, which again was, if we had us at two months ago and said, right, within eight weeks, you're going to build a subscription base, you're going to go into supermarkets, you're going to build an app, and you're going to start podcasts. We would have said, right, let's just take a little time here. Let's pause. That's a breath. huge, huge undertaking. It was Yes, but I, I think, you know, necessity is the mother of invention and, and the whole of the big issue organization has been remarkable. We knew that we needed to get money in so that we could get money out to vendors. We our, our motto and, and our ethos has been a hand up, not a hand out forever. You know, people work their way back themselves. But for as long as this is going on, we have to be a hand out organization. People are giving us their money and they have to trust us to pass that out, whether it's going to vendors as um, uh, food vouchers for supermarkets, whether it is buying them electricity cards, whether it is money, just simple, cold cash we have mm. to find ways that when people give us and they trust us to look after the vendors that we're getting it out and that's what we're doing thanks paul such important and inspiring work we we wish you really all the best with a speedy recovery from this situation well thanks to you and the team tom for having me on and allowing me to talk about a big issue and what we're doing and, and i encourage all your viewers um if you haven't got the big issue already this week go and get it Take a subscription and encourage others. And, and thanks again. That's great. Thank you. Now, for our final story, this week is Mental Health Awareness Week, which is an annual week of the year that is dedicated to encouraging people to share their experiences of mental health for three main reasons. To help each other understand and support each other more. To end the stigma that is attached to mental health and really to ensure that nobody should have to face a mental health problem alone. And while there are many charities doing fantastic work in this field, Sarah has a story about a particular charity that has had to adapt its traditional approach to campaigning in the face of the current pandemic. Sarah. Thanks, Tom. To support the week, the Green Ribbon Campaign, which is run by the Lord Mayor's Appeal, allows people to show their support for ending the stigma around mental health in the workplace. According to the charity, 90% of us have been impacted by a mental health challenge, either directly or indirectly, with 6 out of 10 of us experiencing mental health challenges without ever mentioning it to work colleagues. Last year, more than 170,000 Green Ribbons were sold to firms throughout the UK. With the impact of mental health challenges heightened during COVID-19, the charity says that the well-being of employees is ever more important. To continue the campaign whilst complying with social distancing rules, the campaign has moved online, like many things. People are now encouraged to wear a green ribbon on their social media profile picture alongside the hashtag #EndTheStigma. If people need help, there is help available. Many mental health organisations are now able to support people online. Lifeline told us that since moving their entire team of therapists and support staff online, they've managed to deliver 1,000 counselling sessions over the phone. That's fantastic to hear, Sarah. Thank you so much for that story. Well, that's almost all we've got time for this week. You can find out more about all of today's stories and all the other positive news this week on our website, therooftop.news and on Facebook and Instagram at News From The Rooftop, and of course, Twitter at News From Rooftop. And as always, if you've got a good story that you want to shout from the rooftop about, email it to us at editor at the rooftop.news. Well, that really is all we've got time for. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks very much. See you next time.